Today, we're going to be taking a look at the epitome of British farm transport. Some of you probably just let out a gasp of horror and spilt your coffee all over. You were expecting a Green Land Rover Defender, driven by some mincer, dressed in a tweed jacket, a flat cap, some of those moleskin trousers and those stupid wellies with the straps at the top. Sorry to destroy your illusions, but they're usually slick city folk who've come up here, bought a small holding, just so they can take some selfies with an old knacker of a Swaledale sheep that's probably too fucked to put in a mutton bolty. But the reality is this. A filthy high-vis, a dirty woolly hat that you got from H Concern, just teetering on the top of your head, and some Dunlop safety boots or wellies, but they must cost under a tenner. But most importantly, the L200. I'm a dear bread, I'm a dear bread. I'm a dirty, filthy, stinky, I'm a bread, I'm a dear bread. I'm a dear bread from dead. You do have to be inbred to drive one of these, but because it's for editorial purposes, they let it slide this time. But I've got to dress like an inbred, and I've got to tell everyone I live in Dent. But I'm quite happy to be the first person to drive an L200 whose parents aren't also siblings. What's it like to drive? It's not great. It's severely underpowered. It's uncomfortable. The ride is dreadful. It knocks, it bangs, it rattles, it makes all sorts of funny noises. And all the time, it feels like there's a little Japanese man under the bonnet with an egg timer just waiting to make it go bang. People make the mistake of buying these with chrome bull bars, chrome bullshit bars, leather seats, alloy wheels, warrior plastered all over the side. But it doesn't make a difference. They're all the same. They're all shit. Some people decide they want an L200, so they have a look on Auto Trader. And they'll find one for three, four grand at a car dealership in Nelson, Breerfield, Cone, Bradford, Keighley. And you can guarantee it'll say on the advert, Mint, never been welded. And when you get there, you look underneath and you'll think, yeah, the chassis does look alright actually, because it's been covered in this stuff. Run away! All L200s are rock boxes. I don't care if it's on 50k or 150k, there are no exceptions. I've had the dirtiest shitbox L200 to showroom minters that have been spit polished every weekend and they all look the same underneath. This particular L200 has had to be welded in four different places on the chassis for the MOT. Make sure you watch out for the leaf spring hangers when you buy one of these. But it isn't all doom and gloom. I've seen countless inbred farming families piled into one of these. There's Mr Farmer sat here. He's got seven layers of clothes on. His seat is pushed all the way back. Sat next to him in the passenger seat, there's a Shepton Mallet pig, his wife. And on the dashboard, there's Granny's knickers drying on the heaters. In the back, we've got big fat stinking Granny Farmer eating a pack of Walker's shortbread, sandwiched between two dirty little kids. In the tub, there's a rabid dog with three legs and half a ton of animal feed, all whilst towing a triple axle cattle trailer full of fat lambs. And they all look happy. You've got to remember that these families probably used to have to cope with owning a Defender which has no room, no power, and I have never, ever seen a happy Defender owner. You can even fit a bale of hay in the back. I'd like to see you do that in a Land Rover Defender. The interior is typically Japanese. It's grey, it's depressing, but very utilitarian. There's this very useful voltmeter, so you know whether your battery's charging or not. Apparently it's minus E degrees outside. You need to be a nuclear physicist to work that one out. And we've got this inclinometer that looks like something you'd find in one of the Mitsubishi Zeros that bombed Pearl Harbor. In case you're wondering why so many farmers seem to get stuck in these trucks, it's because they don't realise it's not a four-wheel drive until you push the lever forwards. You'll also notice that every last part of this cab is covered from top to bottom in filth. 
Now, this wouldn't be an L200 review if we didn't try taking it off-road first. Oh no! Oh, it's ice! Jesus Christ, it's fine, it's fine! Well, um, there's been a terrible accident, as you can see. Uh, well, I think I think he's dead. Uh, so we're waiting for the relevant authorities. So we're going to get this towed out. Fucking gun at the L200. Right, is it low? previous day we did actually come across another incident where a man in an attempt to slow himself down the hill ripped the handbrake, did a 180 in the road and ended up in a ditch. The mongoloid in charge of filming however decided to switch the camera off at the crucial moment where we towed the courser out of the ditch and up the hill in these treacherous road conditions. I'm sure there are other countries where the road conditions are far worse than this but this is England, no one can drive. I started this review with a feeling of disdain towards the L200, but after it outperformed the Land Rover Discovery, I'm actually starting to think they're pretty good value for money. Yeah, they're underpowered rock boxes, but find a pickup that isn't. Cheap to buy, parts are cheap, so you don't need to worry about giving them abuse. Now this L200 is for sale. It's only on 95,000 miles, and it comes with 12 months MOT. So I'll tell you what I'll do, bring two grand cash, and it's yours. I'll even offer a warranty which does expire when you reach the bottom of the yard. And the yard is on a downhill slope.